Next up on the Cosmic News Network, first contact with Joshua Putt. Good morning, Earthlings. Good. How you doing today? Good. How you doing today? Welcome morning, to First Contact Radio. Radio. Welcome to First Contact Radio. To talk about all these things I'm talking about is because in life, everything is energy. Every single thing that's out there. Yo, it's first contact with Joshua Poet. He's the man on the mic, just in case you didn't know it. Covering news from all around the globe, from the weather and space to UFOs. He'll talk politics and make you open your eyes. Conspiracy theories and government lies. He'll dig it all up and try to find the proof. Cause it's time to demand the truth. It's time. First contact it's time. radio. We it's have time to demand the truth. truth. First contact the radio. We it's have arrived. First contact the radio. Good morning, Earthlings. How you doing? We made it to Friday. The weekend is upon us. The beginning of spring is here. What shall we do? What shall we do? Well, we're going to start off to find out what we're dealing with. So, we have a transition taking place in just a bit. That goes from one moon sign to the next. So. We have a sun sign in Aries. Aries is a fire sign. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac, so it's about pioneering, leadership, taking charge, putting things in order, organization. Heard the term spring cleaning, okay, so organizing what's going on. And then we have a moon sign which is going from water into fire. So we're going to have double fire as we go into this weekend. Lots of ideas. Remember, fire with lots of ideas is good, but then there's the challenge is that when you have lots of ideas coming from lots of people, sometimes those ideas can clash. So it's just important that that fire works nicely with each other because we know a little bit of fire mixed with other fire can make a big, big, big fire. And so it's just important that we don't get too caught up in our egos. Now we look here and see that at a little afternoonish, we have a trine between the sun and the moon, between Aries and Sagittarius. So we have a nice, good, positive energy between this, between Aries is like truthfulness. She's the uh, the one who shoots the arrow of truth. Higher learning and education, higher thoughts, our higher self. It relates to the tarot card of temperance. So you've got the leader, the pioneer, and you've got the truth seeker. And those two together form a nice, good shrine. Starting at a little afternoon today, and then we're going to look in the evening time. We've got a couple of lessons, a lesson between that Sagittarius and first of all, Mercury communication. And then we have later between Neptune and taking a new perspective on things. And sometimes through the lessons of communication, we learn how to take a new perspective in all of the matters of the truth, what it is that we want to see, what we need to see in life. Okay? Over the course of the weekend, we're going to be, as we can see, in Sagittarius tomorrow. Nice trine between Sagittarius and here Uranus, unexpected changes and events. And then on Sunday, we're going to be making a transition going from Sagittarius into Capricorn, and that transition will take place sometime mid afternoon. And then, of course, we have later in that evening, Sunday night, there's going to be a little bit of a square lesson between Capricorn and sign of Aries, so Sunday night could have a little bit of intensity to it. Tomorrow should be a nice good communication day as well as today. Just remember those ideas. Don't get too, uh, don't let your ego take charge, especially when you're working with groups of others. Now, it says here that this year's winter diamond, bright Jupiter on the top, bright Sirius on the bottom, Procyon and Betelgeuse forming the left and right corners persists well into spring. It stands straight up in the south around dusk and tips westward in the evening advances. I was looking up in the sky last night and saw that. Pretty amazing. It's up there for some time. So check it out. All right, we have a moon phase. It's a waning phase. We're now 
making our way back down to the new moon. The Mayan Oracle shows that we are at a 12-tone day. Cosmic, or the uh, crystal tone of cooperation. We have the sin, kin for today, or symbol for today, which is the white wind, which is all about communication, inspiration. So today would be the cooperation of communication, guided by timelessness, the wizard. Again, just think of key words for each one of these and put them together and then just let your mind kind of unwrap the mystery of what this is all about. The hidden power today is our storm. That's the storm within ourselves. Synchronicity navigation is our like-minded energy and our use of our free will is our challenge for the day. We look to see here that we are clearly into this pillar and over the course of this weekend we don't have anything of a heavy nature but coming next week we've got 10 days in a row so we'll be ready for that. If we go over to space weather our solar wind is 374.5 kilometers per second. Planetary K index is in the 3 range. A little bit of a activity going on. We have this one coronal hole which seems to be just kind of hanging there but no notification that there's anything uh, sending anything our way. M class for possibilities up to 45. X class down to 1. Geomagnetic storm activity is pretty low as well. And our numerology for today is the number 4. 4 is the number of Aries which we just entered. Aries is represented by Emperor, the tarot card, the Hebrew letter He, he who sets in order, is the meaning of that. Was a discipline, strong, stable, pragmatic, down to earth, reliable, dependable, hard working. On the flip side, they could uh, lack imagination and emotions. They may not bother or put too much care in their appearance. Okay? So if you think of Aries, if it's about putting things in order, and if things are not organized, the opposite would be disorganization. All right, and let's see how we arrived at that. Here we go. We got a three for the month. We've got a 21. Two plus one is three, and we got the year 2014, which is a seven. So we got a three plus a three plus a seven is a 13. One plus three equals four. That is how we arrive at our numerology for today. Tomorrow will probably be a five day. And the next day after that will be a six. So those are the numbers we're working with. You come here, check out the numerology chart to see what they mean. Okay. And there you have it. That gets us started for today. UFO News is up next. Stay tuned. This is the UFO News with Joshua Poet. much. There we go. First story. This was over Los Angeles. We may have, may have talked about this one, but if not, here we go again. This was uh, from the 15th. It says, hope this finds you well. Here's some new footage of some orbs I filmed in my front, in front of my house in LA, Los Angeles on the 15th. First clip shows a large UFO with two smaller orbs flying around it. The others are various UFOs I filmed throughout the day. The last clip shows a low flying orb in my neighborhood. Okay. So let's see what we've got here. UFO seminar. Now, are all of these, you know, sometimes people say that some of these summoners aren't all real and that there there's some hoaxes going on. So that may be with this one as well. I'm not sure if this is the same gentleman who tries to call them out. Um, but I just thought I'd post this just so you could check it out and see what you think. Is this a real one or is this one of the hoaxes that we unfortunately get from time to time? Okay. And in this day and age, unfortunately, we have hoaxes that we have to deal with to try to decipher from what's real and what isn't. So I'm going to leave that there. You decide. If you have any ideas, let me know what you think. All right, now we're going to move from there. Here we have a second witness reporting this triangle, or the double triangle UFO that happened in Ohio. 
an Ohio witness at Massillon, became the second Ohio witness to come forward on March 19th with details of a UFO encounter from the previous evening. This was all recorded in the MUFON database. This occurred in Austin Town at 8.20 p.m. involving two silent black triangle UFOs operating less than 330 feet off the ground. The account was covered by veteran observers as veteran observes two triangle UFOs in town. 65 minutes later in Maslin and approximately 60 miles southwest of Austin Town, a witness had stepped outside for a cigarette while talking to a friend on the phone when the lights in the sky were noticed. There were 10 to 20 large green balls, all in a perfect straight line, all steadying. The witness stated, then they started to blink faster and faster to strobe, and they all went for the exact same moment. This was like three to four seconds, and it was over. It appeared to be up to a quarter mile long in the southwest, northwest. It might have been as low as 800 feet over the neighborhood. It was low and right there, and it was scary. I told my friend on the phone what it looked like. All right, so check that one out. The link's available, firstcontactradio.com. Here we have a strange story of a beam coming off of a ship. This one says, Light Beam from Triangle UFO Surrounds Illinois Witness. And Roger Marsh, UFO Examiner. An Illinois witness reports a UFO incident with four friends at a gravel pit just outside of Freeport involving a UFO under 20 feet that projected a beam of light to the ground. The witness and four friends were walking along the gravel pit about 8 p.m. in 1997 when the light was first noticed in the western sky. The others first dismissed the light as a star. For some reason, it stayed fix I stayed fixated on the light as we kept walking. Soon the light was too bright to ignore, and we all started watching as it approached directly towards us. The object was moving extremely slow. I would measure maybe 5 to 10 miles per hour as it approached. What had appeared to be one bright light was now visibly two bright lights in front of the smaller lights and the rear sides. As it came closer, I began to hear a silent noise that can describe as hovering sound or quiet mechanical air. The object then emitted a beam of light. As the craft was almost 15, 10, 15 to 20 feet directly above us, a light came and projected down straight onto one of our friends I was with. The image will be burned in my brain for the rest of my life. When the beam shined onto him, we all began to run. And as I looked back, I saw him take cover behind a nearby pile of gravel. The light stayed on him as the craft continued to travel east over the tree line and then turned off. The witness could not identify the object. Interesting. What would you do if you were out and a UFO shined a light on you? I don't know, maybe wave? You know, and then just go and just to see what the reaction is when they shine a light on people? All right, here is some UFO pics. It says these are uh, it's a 7 minute and 50 second video. It says these are some of the best UFO pics of recorded in history. Uh, it's a nice collection here. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, check through this, and you're going to find lots of great pictures. You're seeing some of them right now as I skim through it. All right. Lots of good sightings. Certainly, you've seen many of these because we've been looking. Uh, we've been looking at these for a while. All right, let's close that. And let's look at this last story here. Town that has been researching ETs for 20 years will set up UFO at Space Center. Boyle has been known as for years as a popular place despite UFOs, and now the town is hoping to set up a dedicated Space Center. A proposal to establish a Boyle Space and UFO Center has been backed by the Boyle Town Council. A presentation was made to the Town Council this month in which Imon Nespor estimated the cost 
such a center would be around 176,000 pounds if an existing facility was used. The center, which would bring jobs and tours to Boyles, would be focused on local and Irish heritage and education. The exhibits would embrace large time spaces of Irish history to modern day events. Astronomer Mark Anspor estimated the center could attract up to 150,000 visitors a year, including school tours, Irish and international tourists. For the past 20 years, Ansbro from the town of Boyle has been carrying out research on the extraterrestrial intelligence. Ansbro has previously set up an all-sky camera to monitor the whole sky hemisphere around the clock. The camera comprised of 11 cameras to record anything that moves or is unusual. Betty Mylar, who died in 2010, made Boyle famous for UFO sightings. She was president of the UFO Sighting Society in Ireland. Okay. It says Chris O'Donnell has made a point of mentioning his hometown of Boyle in almost all major interviews, which has brought a new focus to the town, to the north, Roscommon town. All right. So there you have it. That is UFO news and what's going on at the moment. I'm going to jump away. I'll be back. I'm going to play a couple songs here. Maybe at least one. Alright, then I'll be back. Another alien visitor claimed that his race had been looking in on us for centuries, and that they had in fact influenced the course of human history in some rather critical and startling ways. Listen up. Myself and I am someone else. Do you know what I mean? What it sound is crazy to you. If you see what I've seen, for it is a time, dimensions of space. Traveling through the universe. Of a membrane gone insane. Everything is possible. Just gotta see with an open mind. Winds of change are blowing through. Sounds are in the air. Distant voice calls to me. I hear it everywhere. Communication from beyond. A message for this world. Cosmic signals sent to Earth. Beep, 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 beep. Don't arouse suspicion of a membrane. Gone insane. Everything is possible. Just gotta see with an open mind. Is anybody listening to what is being said? Perhaps it's quite important. This message in my head. Keep your calm. Stand your ground. Trust yourself. My observation. That's my report. Don't arouse suspicion of a membrane gone insane. Everything is possible. Just gotta see with an open mind. Come here to chew bubble gum and kick ass. 
and I'm all out of bubble gum. <laughs> oh, oh.
wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Patriots arise. It's time to demand the truth. All right. There you go. Three in a row from Ufoetry. That would be a little bit of self-promotion, self-promotion, self-promotion. All right. Now, this story here, this is going to be one that will amaze you. Because who could have saw this one coming? Well, except probably all of us. Okay, remember the other day, there's the story of this reporter who uh, went ahead and made this claim about what was going on in the White House and the press room and all this and that. Well, she kind of reversed herself. Yeah, like we still didn't expect that, right? Here's a video if you want to check it out. I'm not going to play this here. I'm just going to show you. It's Rush Limbaugh talking. But it goes on to say, already beset with a reputation for manipulating media and fearing coverage, the White House has match tossed has a match tossed into its communication department Thursday when a local TV reporter aired an apparent claim that reporters routinely submit their questions in advance of the daily presidential press briefing. By the time radio host Lin Russ Limbaugh picked up the story, Obama press secretary Jay Carney and some reporters in the White House press pool were denying the claim by Catherine Anea of KPHO TV in Phoenix. Limbaugh declared this the kind of thing that upsets the soap opera narrative inside the Beltway. After airing clips of the broadcast and weighing her story against the denials, Limbaugh noted that Anya seems starstruck by her visit and didn't sound capable of making something up or inventing it. He characterized the reporter as just ignorant enough to be trusted. She either misunderstood what she saw or misunderstood what she was told, Limbaugh said. But even when she was telling the story, oh yeah, and sometimes the press secretary gets the questions in advance as if there's nothing wrong with that. By the way, she didn't sound like she thought anything was wrong with it. She just was fascinated how it all works. The talk show predicted Anya would soon be pressured to retact her story. I'll predict, and it'll be by 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 22 minutes, and she will have pressured enough into saying she misunderstood. I mean, they're going to hold her career in balance there because they can't allow this to stand, that they submit their questions in advance and that Tony then picks out once he wants, and that they get their answers in advance. They can't let this stand, even if it's true. Sure enough, when Anya arrived back in Phoenix Thursday, she walked back parts of her story in an email to the London Daily Mall. Nevertheless, she insisted, the London paper said that she herself was asked to submit a question in advance for Carney's on Wednesday afternoon. Whatever the case, her story has gained traction at the time, when it's hard to imagine there are many reporters who still believe that Obama has a good chance to fulfill his prediction that he would have the most transparent administration in history. Do you know what the problem is? Cowardice. Too much cowardice. We have an administration of absolute cowards. Come on, you tell me that Obama's a brave man? He's a coward. He's nothing but a big sissy, a girly man in office. Look what's going on. He's making our country look horrible because he's such a horrible sissy man. And that sissy attitude is making itself into all of the administration. They're nothing more than a bunch of cowards, sniveling cowards, thin-skinned, and you say something bad, oh, Obama's going to come after me. Obama doesn't have the wherewithal to do anything. That man's not a leader. He's not fit to lead anything. He should not be in office. He's a clown. Jay Carney, look at the name, Carney, like a carnival huckster. He's a clown. These are all clowns in there. Snake oil salesmen, all of them. We shouldn't be listening to them, but what's even shameful is that reporters go out there and then they get shamed and they get embarrassed and they get afraid to tell their stories. Oh, boo-hoo. Well, then you know what? Quit being reporters. Leave the profession. If you can't go out there and ask tough questions, then leave the profession. I mean, look at Obama. He goes out there and he... I can go on and on. It's just irritating. But you got cowards and then you got people who are afraid of the cowards because the cowards are making laws and rules and restrictions to make sure that the word don't get out. They don't want people to know how bad that they are. Cowards, all of them. Cowards. And one day, they're going to get their due. I ain't going to have a thing to do with it. Their karma is going to come back and it's going to bite them all in the butt. And when it does, I certainly hope that all of America can see this. Because we know what kind of uh, incompetent fools they are. We would all do well to see them 
collapse in front of us. I mean, a majority of people still believe that they're doing a great job. Don't know how, don't know where those people are getting their information, but there are people out there who believe this administration's doing a great job. I'd like to know what their lives are like, because if someone's thinking they're doing a great job, I wonder what doing a bad job is to them. Okay, now, here's another article dealing with our privacy, how much Microsoft charges the FBI for user data. It's no mystery that the government agencies compel each tech company to give them access to user data, says this is totally legal. It's also pretty well known that tech companies charge the government for the trouble. We just never really know how much until now. Long story short, Microsoft charges the FBI hundreds of thousands of dollars a month for access to information about you, and the rates are on the rise. The Syrian Electronic Army says that it hacked into FBI's super-secret digital technology unit where they found the actual invoices for Microsoft detailing how much each request for data cost. An invoice from December totals $145,100, which boils down to $100 per request. The rate has doubled by August 2013 when Microsoft charged the FBI 200 per request for a total of $352,200. The most recent invoice from November 2013 is 281000 Remember, all of these six-figure sums provided by taxpayers are for one month's worth of user data requests. That adds up to millions of dollars a year. Here's an example of that invoice. So don't get mad about this, as many experts told the Daily Mall who got to analyze the documents before the SEA released them to pub them publicly, it's actually a really good thing that Microsoft charges the FBI for these requests, if no other reason than to leave a paper trail. Actually, when companies like Google and Yahoo charge the government for access to data, the money can potentially go towards making free services like email better. Indeed, these services are getting better and more secure. Oh, I see. So we're now supposed to understand that because the information is being turned over and because Microsoft is charging they can use that to make our email better and we're supposed to feel glad about that you know it would be a good thing Microsoft if you're charging money for my data to them you shouldn't get that money it's my data so I should get a part of that every single American that you're selling their data from they should get a part of that money because it's their data that you're selling again another disreputable organization and another article here trying to let us know that we just need to buy into all of their BS and allow ourselves to, uh, to to give up all of our rights and our privacies just in the honor in the name of security nonsense nonsense all right when the when the members of Congress when the president abide by the same rules that they put out then perhaps I'll consider following some of them. But when these individuals in Congress and in the White House put out laws and rules and then decide they're not going to follow them, then no other American needs to follow them. You don't need to follow them. Why? Because if they're setting the example and they can't do it, then you don't need to either. Don't need to. Nope. Okay. Moving on. Moving on. From there, let's look at the universe. All right, these are uh, images from 360 Spitzer infrared camera. And these are pictures of the Milky Way here. I got some pretty good images. All right, so I'm going to leave these links available so you can go around and look at the galaxy. Says turning the galaxy may be as easy as clicking a button with the NASA's new zoomable 360 mosaic. Let's see what we have here. All right. Well, I'm gonna have to leave the link available for you to uh, check it out because let's see. But the link is here. All right. So I'm gonna move on from this. Let you figure that one out. The link's there, though. All right, Calvaton. Calvaton. Who is Calvaton? Well, with the Mayan calendar, he is a very important figure. He is one of the 
considered one of the important personalities that came out of the Mayan cosmology, known as the magician of time. He understood mathematics or numbers as a type of language that transcends the subjectivity of human verbal experience. His sentiment, all is number, God is a number, God is in all, is an intriguing way to catalog the Maya's message that we are intimately linked and with and informed by the galaxy. All of life is ordered by the same basic reordering patterns. In the Yucatan Mayan language, the word Hunabku means source. The one, giver of movement and measure, the galactic core, God. For all of those who have issue with the term God, as we can see, here's Bikal Vatan in the Mayan cosmology talking about God. So the concept of God extends much further than what people think. And for those who are uncertain about it, just need to check and see that it is acknowledged by beings who have a lot of insight. Calvatan's prophecy speaks of the closing of the World Age cycle on December 21st, 2012. As the date approached, we are collectively in a transition phase of the old world dying and new world being born. Based on knowledge of the larger cycles of time as mapped by the ancient Maya, Pakal knew that humanity as a species would become disconnected from the laws of the natural world and would fall ignorant of our sacred independence with nature. He also knew that modern humanity would be put to the test to see if we can regain our conscious connection to natural time as a universal frequency of synchronization, evolving beyond the constructs of man-made linear time. The prophetic transmission is clearly demonstrated in the mathematical ratio constants of natural and artificial time and frequencies. Can humanity as a whole awaken to the discrepancy of our man-made timing standard that has set us apart from the rest of nature and get back in harmony with the timing frequency of the living universe? Well, that is the purpose of the 13 moon calendar, the dream spell calendar, is to get us off of the unnatural frequency back into harmony with nature, because the calendar itself is 13 moons, coded according to the moon cycles. It's coded according to the cycles of the sun. When you have a calendar that moves according to the cycles of the sun and the moon, guess what? Those who are following it are going to be tuned into those natural cycles a bit more than those who aren't. And following the Gregorian calendar is very evident. For anyone who spends some time looking at it, there aren't any cycles represented in there. As a matter of fact, you can take the 12 months and take every day past 28 and add them together and guess what you come up with? That's right, one extra month of 28 days. So everything was kind of hidden within this period here, within the calendar. 365 days round, one day out of time, 364 days of making it through the cycles. And it repeats, and it repeats, and it repeats, and has been doing this for a long time. Unlike our Gregorian calendar, which was set up in order to keep track of how much money you owe. That's what it was about. It was a business system. Business system. I guess you could say a business system for slaves, because it had to be used of how to keep track of the money, the accounting, what people owed. Not about natural time, not about putting you in synchronicity with natural time at all. See, it's called artificial time, 1260. 12, Man-made, 12-month 12 calendar, mechanical, 60-minute hour. As opposed to natural time, 1320, which are the 13 moon cycles. Here it says 20 fingers and toes, but it's also 20 solar cycles. Okay, 20 solar seals. As the Grand Wizard of Time, Pakalvatan's message is revealed in a manner which cannot be denied. Pakalvatan died in 683 AD, yet nine years passed before his tomb was dedicated and sealed in 692. His tomb was not discovered and reopened until 1952. Between 692 and 1952, there was actually exactly 1,260 years, 1260 artificial time. Between, 19, between 692 and 1260, the closing of the cycle, there are exactly 1,320 years, or 1320 natural time. So there's something coded within there. His prophecy is said to mythically emanate through his telectinon, 
the earth spirit speaking tube, an actual physical tube that can be found today right where it was, constructed long ago at the bottom of a nine-story temple of inscriptions, Palenque, Tiapas, Mexico. This sacred plaster tube, which runs from the ground all the way down 69 steps to the underground chamber, which holds Pical's huge limestone sarcophagus tomb, was actually responsible for the rediscovery of the tomb by archaeologist Alberto Ruiz on June 15, 1952. After founding a small piece of this white tile tubing, Ruiz led a three-year excavation process beginning in 49, resulting in the unearthing of the ancient prophet's stone haven. Okay, so you had Alberto Ruiz, and he saw this white tile tubing sticking out of the ground, became curious about it, and that led him to an excavation process which showed that this tube actually traveled downward into the ground, nine stories, 69 steps to an underground chamber, and in that chamber was where they found the tomb of Calvaton. Okay? Now we have some nice links here, dealing a little bit more with Pakal, and so on. But that is the basics of who he is, what he's about, and so the link's available, let's check it out. But the calendar system is very important, because remember, when I talk about how we make these agreements, and these agreements create the energy fields around us, well, we agree that we're following a particular calendar, the Gregorian calendar, therefore we create an energetic field around ourselves. Now, this energetic field, as we know, is not going according to any frequency or cycle of nature. It's just a random set of events. By understanding the other cycle, which is why I read also from the dream spell, it's to understand time and frequency on other levels. It's like wearing different watches. you got Earth time, and then you've got galactic time, and so on. Okay? So that's the idea of it. Now, I want to go further and look at Lord Pakal's tomb here. This is near Palenque, Chiapas, Mexico. Nice good overview of it. And what we have here are some pictures of the tomb itself. Okay. This is the real tomb of Lord Pakal, the great Kenich Janab Pakal. Cool. It's awesome that we can look at these pictures without having to go all the way over there, right? One of the most important structures in Palenque is the tomb of Lord Pakal, the great Kinich Jana Pakal, from March 603 through August 683. It was discovered in 1952 by Alberto Ruiz. Wheeler inside the Temple of Inscriptions, Pakal, on August 31st, 683, at 83 years of age. It assumed the throne in, 690, in July 29th, 615 AD, at the age of 12, and ruled for 68 years. During his long reign near the end of the Classic period, Pakal transformed Palenque into a great city. Around 675 AD, as an old man nearing death, he, he understood the undertook the construction of his burial temple. You are no longer allowed to enter the tomb to see the real thing. They have a reproduction of the museum in Palenque and another in Mexico City at the museum. These photos on our page are of the real thing, not the reproductions. As the crypt is larger than the entrance to the chamber, it is thought that it was built before the pyramid. Pakal's body was placed in the limestone body-shaped sarcophagus, and then it was sealed with a 3.8 by 2.2 meter stone cover. Once the burial rites were completed and the chamber sealed with a layer of stucco, Five or six sacrificial victims were laid in this small antechamber. The stairway inside the temple was filled with rubble, jade pottery, and shell offerings. A stone air chef called the psycho, psycho duct was built starting at the notch in the funeral chamber door and rising to the upper floor of the temple. According to the late Linda Scale, a renowned researcher, the Maya believed that the shaft allowed a mythological serpent to ride from Pakal's tomb to the place occupied by its descendants. The scene depicted on the sarcophagus, a lapidary stone, re represents the instant of Pakal's death and his fall to the underworld. 
A strip of heaven frames the center scene with the kin in the upper right or northwest corner. An akabal, night or darkness, on the far left or northwest corner. The movement of the sun from east to west represents Pakal's journey from life into death. Symbols fill the background of the scene. Shells, jade beads, signs of plenty, and others carried on spirals of blood. The open mouth of Zulba, the underworld, is carved at the bottom of the stone. Two dragon skeletons, united at the lower jaw, make up a U-shaped container that represents the entrance. The dragon's lips are curved inward as though closing over Pakal's falling body. They are inside the underworld at the center of the universe stands a tree of the world with a celestial bird, a single symbol of the kingdom of heaven, poised on the highest branch. The tree of the world is specially marked as a sacred object. The symbols for the tea or tree confirmed it as cottonwood. The symbols for nen or mirror indicate that the tree is shining or powerful being. The enormous figure of God. C, the symbol of blood and that which is holy, is inserted at the base of the tree and is lined up with Pakal's body. The tips of the tree's branch are shaped like the bowls used to catch sacrificial blood. Jade beads and tubes surround the square nostril dragons that are born from these vessels, indicating they are essentially sacred. The jewel-covered monsters are depicted in deliberate contrast to the skeletal dragons below them. Okay, you can see there's a lot more describing the tomb. Okay, here's some other pictures here. Climb up, and then now you climb down. Go down into the Temple of Inscription. There she is. Okay, that's pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. All right, so links available so you can really check it out in more depth. And of course, those who have spent time studying the tomb and the sarcophagus understand that. There's an inscription on it that looks like Pakal is on some sort of vehicle riding up to space. And if you recall, there was an episode of Ancient Aliens in which Giorgio went ahead and he met with somebody who actually made and constructed a, a, uh, a uh, device that was based upon that sarcophagus and what he saw in there. And when you saw it, it looks like a vehicle, uh, some sort of vehicle of travel. So very interesting information that's there. Check it out. Follow the links to learn more about the Kalvatan. Interesting character and helps you to understand why the dream spell, why the Mayan calendar is so important. Okay, Even though we've gone through that time, December 21st, it's still important because December 21st was just the beginning. It was a doorway we went through to get us to the next phase. We've arrived, and there's been lots of changes ever since because we've entered a new phase, a new place in the galaxy, some place where we've been before, but it's been a long, long time. We're just moving in cycles. Okay, let's check out our message for today. This is Galactic Federation of Light, Mother Mary. Mother Mary, you have lifted the limits of perpetuity. Channeled by Franzipeta, March 17, 2014. Mother Mary. Hello sweet ones. I come today to give you encouragement and enlightenment as you stand right now in your journey. You are by no doubt encapsulating and experiencing the tremendous influx of light of a new quality that you have not experienced before. This is because, my dear ones, you are encompassing the Christ Light Consciousness more and more within your energy fields and you are coming more and more online with your Divine Essence and Purpose. It is difficult to quantify it, it is difficult to qualify it. It is difficult to explain it. Your experience is your experience and it is unique to you and it is perfect for you. However there is a common theme running throughout. There is a lightning and a floating of your energy as never before. It necessitates you to trust and go with it and thus it necessitates and allows you to move forward with it, not really knowing where it leads, because for all intents and purposes, you are there, you are just building within your own energy framework more of the divine template of which you originate. Yes, it takes trust and letting go. It also brings wonderment as you allow yourselves to encompass more light and love to your heart's content. And that is the key, just allow it to your heart's content. That is a peculiar phrase in some ways, but so apropos to your experience now. 
you are allowing your heart to soar to new heights, all the while feeling more and more comfortable with it, albeit sometimes intense waves of it. But as any of you body surfers would know, the more you flow with the wave, the more it will not take you down, it allows you to wander aimlessly within the flow, allowing it to take you with it, all the while knowing that you are safe the more you let go. And then it brings the wonderful rush of going with the surge of it, in this case, pure joy and enlightenment. And if you can grasp a little of what I am telling you, you are where you need to be. For now has no set boundaries and descriptions, but utter delight in where this is taking you. Float amongst the energy much like a jellyfish, illuminated and graceful and flowing, expanding and contracting, and floating amongst the milieu it is in, much like you in this milieu of energy, completely graceful and dance-like, yet solid in the knowing you are where you need to be. And that is the key, dear ones, everywhere you are right now, wherever it is, as long you are centered in your heart and open to new heights of experiences, is where you need to be and where it will bring the most expansion. You are testing your wings, so to speak now, and although it may seem a little bit unknown and a little unnerving as to the heights you feel you can go now, take it in stride and be full within the experience, dear ones. For we are showing you what it is like to be in full glory of your divine essence, and it is not all like you thought it would be, yet gloriously more, is it not? Let it unfold and let it expand and be within the energy fully now, dear ones. Take it in stride, put aside your expectations, and just allow yourself to experience the sweet new feelings and knowings that are coming to the forefront for you now. For within allowing yourself to go into nothingness, you open yourself into complete fullness and expansiveness. And you will feel a sense of familiarity with this, dear hearts. We guarantee it. It just takes coming out of your preconceived ideas, and to experience the newness of the light and to cherish the newness of the light, and to absorb all it has in store for you, dear ones. For all the glory that you remember, or are beginning to remember, from your early days of conception into your divine beingness, is coming back full swing and the energies are infiltrating you little by little and sometimes a lot by a lot, too, yet you are ready for it. You are primed for it. You are arriving at your new self. In the past months you have raised considerably in your frequencies, dear ones, and in the next few days, weeks and months, this will triple, and yes, I am referring to the March equinox and its aftermath. But do not despair or be frightened, because you are ready. You are ready for it. Trust that. Let go and allow. But also mind your mind, to put forth a little paradox. By this I mean, don't engage your mind to try and figure it out. Allow it to come along for the ride, letting your light heart lead the way, being open and willing to the experience. And that is key, being open and willing for the experience of your immense transformation. In some ways you are beginning to not totally recognize yourself. And that is okay, because all that is happening is that the old mindsets and qualifiers of your old mind ego existence is giving way to a totality of spirit and wholeness as you encompass and join and integrate with your higher self and monad, resembling more and more the energy of oneness and creator of all that is. And that is key. You are floating amongst that reality now. You have lifted the limits of perpetuity and entered a whole new ball game, one that is familiar and yet new. So ride with it, dear ones and inhale all it has to offer, with each breath that you take. And shortly you will arrive at an entirely new, yet familiar, place of existence, one without all the shackles of yesteryear. For this you find it is necessary to allow yourself to be amongst all the energy of your releasing past experiences and floating amongst it, allowing yourself to see and feel and allow the energies that are contrary to your new experience to just softly be there acknowledging them yet feeling yourself just gently allowing them to drift by you like debris in a clear stream which is you, and like being touched by a soft breeze, gently clearing away all energy that is denser than your energy is. Now, and like fluffy clouds gently moving to reveal a clear blue sky, and like the gentle spring rain washing away the dust of what once was, to reveal the glow and shine of the essential you. And so dear ones, you can see that you are farther along than you thought yet even further shall you travel. You are equipped for it and you are primed for it. So let go and allow it. 
We are rooting for you. You are our angels of advancement, showing the way for others just by your being within your sweet glorious energy, standing tall and firm within the gale of energy winds, coming at you. May peace be in your heart and may love pervade you more than ever. I am your servant in love all encompassing and example of heart love all pervading. For you are beginning to experience the phenomena of being that love essence that encompasses so much in your wake, free floating and huge in its expansion and scope of influence. Be cognizant of this, dear ones, as we nudge you to become more so with each breath you take. I am Mother Mary, at your service and at your side with all pervading love as you spread yours. All right, very nice message from Mother Mary. And that leads us to our meditation for today. So go ahead and close your eyes. Take a deep breath. And exhale. Take another deep breath. And as you inhale, imagine inhaling strength, courage. Take a deep, another deep breath. Inhale the courage. Another deep breath. Inhale love. And just think of these qualities of love, strength, courage, and know that these qualities exist inside of you right now. I want you to think of the world, and think of the world in places where there is not love, where there is fear, and where there is doubt. And think of these places and send love and light to these places. Think about all of the people in the world and know that there are many different types. And there's a lot of fear in the world because people are caught up in the fearful stories that are told to them by the fear mongerers. So let's first of all send love to all of the people around the planet to help eradicate the fear that was sent to them. And now let's think of the fear mongerers, the members of the media that are controlled the members of the administrations of the governments around the world that are corrupt, the bankers, the lawyers, the doctors. Let's think of everyone that is corrupt around the world. We don't know all of them, but we can picture them together from the present administrations and the past administrations. And let's just see them all gathered together all of the corrupt individuals in one place and we look and we see that in comparison to the greater whole those corrupt individuals are a small 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 minority of small-minded individuals filled with fear so let's just send so much love to that group right now that one of two things happen that either the love gets into their hearts and they see the error of their ways and they change or the love so overwhelms them that they cannot contain the darkness anymore and they just completely dissipate and disappear from existence to be recycled again at another time and if we can imagine that the leaders the corrupt leaders and bankers the fear mongers if we can imagine them either changed or gone, the planet becomes better. And just imagine the world without all of these fear mongerers. Imagine how peaceful the world would be. Imagine the world without those spreading corruption and lies. Imagine how much further we could go in life. Take a moment and consider during the pos possible lifetimes that we have lived if instead of hiding the truths, if we had continuously shared the truths, just imagine where we would be now as a society, as a global community. And now know that this possibility still exists, which is why, why it's even more important that we just Get rid of all of those who are the fear mongerers, the liars, the corruptors, and just wish them into the cornfield. Send them away. Imagine them on their own planet by themselves, fighting it out in the way that they love to do. And imagine the planet free from all of that negativity, doubt, fear, and the influence of all of them.
And think of the world now and see the world shining bright. See the world love around the planet. And see that the planet is absorbing the love. And the beings are absorbing the love. And just see the planet evolving and growing. Because there are no longer any of those fear mongers to slow things down. No more liars to get in the way. And let us imagine that this truly is possible. So as you go into the world today, put a light of protection around yourself to continue shining and standing in that light and that love. And just keep sending that out so all those you come in contact with are affected by that love that either they change or they go away. And just keep shining that love and that protection around you as you go. And inspire others to do the same simply by being in that love and protective space. So allow your subconscious mind to continue on that journey. Sending out love. Sending out positivity. And let's bring our conscious mind back to the present moment on the count of three. Three, coming back to the present moment filled with confidence. Two, coming back to the present moment filled with faith. And one, coming back to the present moment. Happy, healthy, and whole. Happy, healthy, and whole. Take another deep breath. Exhale and open your eyes. That's it, my friends. We've made it through the week. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much for linking the show, for sharing the show, for your comments, for your emails, for your donations. I really appreciate all of those. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate the support that that y'all are giving me out there and giving the show. Keep spreading the word. We're all in this together. We can make a difference. We just got to stay together and not get separated by the fears and the doubts and all that. But we know how to do it. Just keep sending love because that is the glue that will hold us all together. Have an awesome weekend. Enjoy this new weekend, this first weekend of spring. I'll be back Monday with more news and information. Talk to you soon. Lots of love and light to each and every one of you. Peace. I'm out of here.